Throughout previous discussions, I've touched on various aspects of spiritual life. Today, I'll delve into a more down-to-earth topic through the lens of spiritual science, nutrition. It might seem less profound compared to other themes we've explored, but in our modern era, spiritual science has relevance even in our daily lives. There are different views about spiritual science. Some who only know it superficially accuse it of being too focused on lofty spiritual ideals, detached from practical realities. Yet there are others who, after encountering spiritual science briefly, claim that its followers, like anthroposophists, excessively dwell on matters of diet and consumption. These critics, in their own idealistic way, argue that what we eat and drink holds no significance. They believe that one should transcend the material aspects of life through the power of the spirit. Even those with good intentions might raise these objections against followers of spiritual science. However, amidst widespread discussions about these topics, it's intriguing to explore what spiritual science actually offers in this regard. The famous phrase, a man is what he eats, is often attributed to the German philosopher Ludwig Andreas Feuerbach. Many significant thinkers have echoed this sentiment, suggesting that what we produce and how we act are fundamentally shaped by the food we consume. In a purely materialistic sense, they propose that our digestion directly influences our actions. With the ongoing conversations about eating habits, it's easy for someone to adopt the belief that a person's physical existence is solely defined by their diet. However, there are several nuanced perspectives to consider on this matter. Let's clarify the purpose behind today's discussion. It's not about advocating specific beliefs or trying to reform anyone. As a spiritual scientist, my duty is to reveal truths without stirring up controversy. The aim isn't to push one approach over another. Assuming otherwise would miss the point entirely. I'll present only the facts, and it's crucial to grasp that I'm not taking sides for or against anything. Keeping this in mind, let's explore a question from the perspective of spiritual science. Does the saying, a man is what he eats, hold some truth? Remember, the human body serves as a tool for the spirit. Examining its functions, we realise that it's the physical instrument we use. Just like any tool, it needs to function properly to serve its purpose. If our bodies don't function well, our freedom is hindered and our intentions are disrupted. When spiritual scientists ponder our bodies, we question if an unsuitable diet binds us to and hampers our bodies, making them unfit for our life's aspirations. Could we shape our bodies to better serve our spiritual impulses, ignoring the right nourishment? Could we forfeit our freedom and become slaves to our bodies? What should we eat to ensure we're not just a product of our diet? These are the essential queries. When we ponder such inquiries, we're exploring nutrition from a different angle. It's a common understanding that, on a purely material level, people continuously deplete the substances stored in their bodies and must replenish them through nourishment. It's a matter of maintaining balance, so the logical step seems to be examining the essential substances needed for the human body, those that construct the basic animalistic form and ensuring that the body receives them. But this approach remains very materialistic. Instead, we should delve deeper into understanding the fundamental purpose of human food and how it truly functions within our bodies. It's crucial to note that what I discuss about humans applies uniquely to them. Spiritual science doesn't align with the idea that humans are closely linked to animals, as proposed by natural science. Otherwise, one could simplify matters by stating that the human body is made up of proteins, fats, carbohydrates and minerals, and then find the best way to fulfil these nutritional needs. However, spiritual science asserts that every material occurrence, including physical aspects, is merely the external manifestation of spiritual processes. Even the processes of nourishment can't be purely physical. They represent the external facets of spiritual events, Likewise, though the physical body may seem a collection of chemical events, a person remains a unified being at their core. Our focus has often centred on the journey from the purely physical to the spiritual realm. We've heard that the physical body is nurtured by the etheric body, which is essentially the architect behind the physical form, but to perceive it solely through chemical processes is a mistake. Examining only the chemistry behind it in a purely materialistic manner doesn't capture the full essence. Beyond the etheric body lies the astral body, expressing instinctive feelings and certain facets of the soul. 
Through the lens of spiritual science, we understand that both the etheric and physical bodies are intertwined with the astral body. It's essential not just to see one aspect, but also to perceive the astral body beyond the physical. Completing this quartet is the ego, the fourth component of human existence. To truly comprehend a person, we must acknowledge this fourfold being. Only by considering this holistic view can we do justice to the complexity of the nutritional problem. It's through this lens that we can explore how these four aspects of the human organism respond to various dietary influences. Now, everyone is aware that humans consume food from the vegetable, animal and mineral kingdoms to sustain their bodies. I'd like to emphasise, especially for those more inclined towards inner contemplation, that I'm not addressing mystics or individuals solely devoted to anthroposophy for spiritual development. This discussion is for everyone. Humans derive sustenance from the three kingdoms, animal, vegetable and mineral. It's crucial to recognise that plants represent the direct opposite of humans, while animals stand as a bridge between the two. This contrast is evident in the process of breathing. Humans inhale oxygen, assimilate it, combine it with carbon and exhale carbon dioxide. In contrast, plants, absorbing carbon to nourish themselves, exhibit the reverse process. While both engage in a form of breathing, its significance differs significantly for each. Thus, spiritually speaking, plants and humans are diametrically opposed. Consider the profound relationship between light and plants. We're well aware of the impact of light deprivation on plant life. This same light not only sustains plants, but also enables us to perceive the vibrant world around us. Physical light possesses an additional dimension. Just as every physical thing has a spiritual counterpart, Spiritual light resides within the physical light that illuminates us. When we revel in the brilliance of physical light, we can acknowledge its spiritual aspect, akin to recognising the spiritual essence within another person. The spiritual light within physical sunlight is akin to the invisible light within the human astral body. It's a part of the cosmic spiritual light dwelling within the astral body, though it remains physically unseen. This highlights its role as the complement or counterpart to physical light. This invisible light within us serves a specific purpose. It could be likened to negative magnetism in contrast to positive magnetism. We perceive its external manifestation when we understand the interconnections between the physical body, etheric body, astral body and ego. The etheric body's role in preserving the physical body against deterioration is often explained. Both humans and animals possess an astral body housing this inner light. The function of this inner light is contrary to external light. When external light shines on a plant, it aids in building its living organism by creating proteins and carbohydrates. Conversely, the inner light's task is to break down. This disintegrative process, managed by the astral body, serves to counteract what external light has built up. There's a continuous breakdown of the substances we consume, enabling these elements to be utilised in opposing the effects of external light. This process of dissolution is integral to a person's ego existence, allowing for inner experiences. While the etheric body preserves the physical, the astral body ensures that consumed food is constantly built up and broken down. The disintegration process within the physical body, managed by the astral body housing the ego, is essential for the ego's full existence in the material world. We've observed an alternating process between humans and plants, Humans exhale carbon dioxide while plants absorb it. Plants exhale oxygen, which humans inhale. This dynamic reaches its extremes between humans and plants. Animals, unlike humans with individual egos, possess collective group egos. Each species of animals is governed by a shared group ego, external to the individuals within that species. The key distinction lies in how disintegration processes occur within animals, directed by an external entity. While in humans, these processes are guided by their individual inner egos. Furthermore, a human's individual ego gradually gains mastery over their internal processes. Let's explore how the ego gradually assumes a central role in bodily functions. Consider the astral body's role in dissolving assimilated substances within humans. In terms of nourishment, a distinct viewpoint emerges. The body, imbued with the ego, engages in breaking down substances generating an inner outcome through this action. The astral body's dissolution processes particularly evoke inner consciousness activities. 
Actions and activities are stimulated by the breakdown processes. Initially, internal warmth is generated, and secondly, there's something subtler, the physical manifestation of inner light, similar to how the internal warmth in the blood arises from protein breakdown. The nervous system's activity embodies this inner light. The nervous system's actions, enabling imagination and prompting thoughts, stem from this process of breakdown, not from the nerves themselves, but from their activity, the function within the nerves. This activity is the physical expression of invisible light brought about through substance degeneration and dissolution. Primarily, internal body warmth arises from protein breakdown, while inner light emerges from processes involving fats, carbohydrates, starches and glucose. These substances also contribute to generating warmth and inner movement, expressing the activity originating from the astral body. It's not merely about ingesting the right amount of food, it's about ensuring that these inner processes occur correctly. Our inner life is grounded in these processes, defining our continuous inward movement and vitality. When these inner processes falter, a person's ability to react properly diminishes, leading to illness. The right internal adaptability lays the groundwork for solving nutritional issues. It indicates that all internal processes humans carry out must run contrary to plant processes. Humans must initiate their processes where plant processes conclude. For instance, when a person consumes vegetarian food, their organism faces demands. Plant-based food lacks significant fat content, requiring the human body, capable of producing fats, to generate fat from sources devoid of it. Consuming animal fats spares this effort. Materialists might argue for storing as much fat effortlessly as possible. However, from a spiritual perspective, the unfolding of this inner activity signifies the unfolding of actual inner life. When a person generates forces to produce fat independently, their ego and astral body gain mastery over the physical and etheric bodies. Eating fat spares the effort of fat production, but undertaking this task autonomously grants freedom, enabling mastery over the body. Refusing this opportunity, a person remains a passive spectator in their spiritual existence. Passivity becomes a burden hindering the full awakening of the astral body's inner flexibility. Denying the chance to produce one's fat poses an internal obstacle, impeding the astral body's inner flexibility. The crux of the matter lies in understanding the internal reactions prompted by different substances. Let's delve into the interplay between vegetable and meat substances in human diets to comprehend how these foods interact within the human organism. Consuming animal protein isn't akin to consuming plant protein. While the inner processes of animals bear similarities to human processes, given that animals also possess an astral body, there are distinctions. The animal's astral body triggers the breakdown of synthesized substances within its physical body. However, the human organism carries these processes a step further than animals do. By spiritually examining the ways and traits of animals, we can draw parallels between humans and the diverse array of animals. Amidst the great variations among human populations, each individual represents a unique species. Humans embody a spiritual consolidation of the diverse characteristics found across various animal forms. If one were to envision the individual traits of diverse animal species as mutually complementary, the essence of what is harmonised within each human would emerge. Each animal embodies, in a one-sided manner, forces that are balanced within humans, structuring their entire organism accordingly. From the most minute structural elements to overall characteristics, the animal kingdom seems to present a diverse array of human traits in a tableau-like manner. To manifest the qualities of the astral body physically, a person must harness all its forces, mastering their inner processes and activating the astral body to perpetuate plant-like processes internally. When we consume food from the animal kingdom, we not only intake the animal's physical meat and fat, but also the product of its astral body contained within these substances. Opting for a vegetarian diet unleashes the pristine forces of our astral body, summoning our complete inner activity. However, a meat diet partly impedes this inner activity. Let's now explore the spiritual aspects of these dietary choices. For a person aiming to gain greater control over their inner bodily processes, it's vital to be equally active in the external world. This demands the cultivation of certain external qualities like endurance, 
bravery, and at times, even assertiveness. Yet, some individuals might not initially possess the strength to rely solely on their astral body, hence relying on the support of a meat-based diet. Essentially, a person owes their internal liberation to substances derived from plants. However, qualities required for active engagement in earthly life don't solely stem from the untouched nature of the astral body. These qualities can also arise from a diet including meat. Consequently, individuals seeking increasing freedom might resort to animal-based nourishment to acquire qualities found across the animal kingdom. Observation often reveals that nations emphasising physical prowess tend to consume meat, with exceptions, while those inclined towards contemplation lean towards vegetarian diets. Both sides should be considered. However, advocating for either diet without understanding its nuanced effects might not yield the best outcomes for everyone's health. While a vegetarian diet might be optimal for some individuals, for others, it might prove detrimental. When discussing human nature broadly, it's crucial to consider individuals to discern the suitable path, vegetable or meat diet, to fulfil their needs. Currently, an excessive meat-based diet naturally yields corresponding outcomes. If meat consumption lessens a person's inner activities, the suppressed energies burgeon inwardly, leading to heightened outward soul engagement with and attachment to the external world. Conversely, nourishing from the plant realm fosters independence and internal development, enabling mastery over one's entirety. Embracing vegetarianism allows one's inner forces to prevail, cultivating a sense of broader horizons and transcending a confined existence. In contrast, a staunch meat-eater tends towards narrower perspectives, embracing rigidity and one-sidedness. Balancing both aspects is essential today to avoid impracticality, Overemphasis on one side can breed impracticality or complete lack of judgment. However, limitations and specialization often trace back to a meat dominated diet. Vegetarianism gifts impulses that elevate individuals beyond restrictive circles. An extreme meat diet links to dogmatism and an inability to transcend one's birth defined confines. Conversely, embracing plant based diets can facilitate rising above these confines. Furthermore, Bypassing the task of fat formation through meat consumption creates a barrier around the astral body, observable even without clairvoyance. Common sense discerns whether a person produces their own fat, visible in the eyes, a marker of the astral body's need to summon the forces for fat generation. Different character traits emerge based on whether a person nourishes themselves from plants or animals. Our connection to the world through our bodies necessitates rising above it through appropriate nutrition. A future awaits where vegetarian diets will be esteemed far more than today. Flexibility in thinking will drive investigations, recognising that what seems foolish now might hold merits from an alternate perspective. The widening of physical and spiritual horizons through vegetarian diets will counteract the narrowness of specialisation, especially in certain scientific domains. Let me illustrate further examples demonstrating how our consumption shapes us. Consider alcohol, derived from plants. Explaining the spiritual scientific reasons would take time, but alcohol externally induces what a person should ideally develop within themselves through their centred ego. Through spiritual insight, it's perceived that alcohol assumes a specific activity that typically belongs to a person's ego. Excessive alcohol consumption reduces the body's need for nourishment, as it evokes forces typically activated by the ego's internal penetration. Alcohol mimics the ego's activity, elucidating why people are drawn to it. However, substituting one's inner self with such indulgence turns one into its captive. Abstaining from alcohol allows a person, if otherwise prepared, to better unleash their ego's potent forces. Imbibing alcohol creates an inner obstacle, diverting processes that ideally should be achieved through the ego's activity. Certain foods exert specific effects on our bodies. Take coffee, for instance. Its impact unfolds through its influence on the astral body. Caffeine and coffee's aftermath prompt our nervous systems to undertake tasks that typically demand inner strength. However, it's not universally beneficial for individuals to consistently act solely from their astral bodies. Human beings aren't solitary entities. They exist within the broader spectrum of life. Coffee, derived from the plant kingdom, elevates a particular plant process externally, assuming a certain role within human tasks. 
Insights reveal that coffee bolsters the activities of our nerves linked to logical consistency and drawing conclusions. Consequently, coffee assists in forging logical connections and maintaining a single thought, albeit at the expense of diminishing our inner forces. Consider how casual conversations over coffee breaks can persist until a topic is thoroughly exhausted, a subtle demonstration of coffee's effects. Tea operates in a contrasting manner. Consumed in large quantities, it disperses thoughts, lending them an airy quality. Tea tends to evoke witty and bright thoughts, fostering individual lightness in ideas. Coffee aids those, like literary figures, who require adept and nuanced thought connections, a positive aspect. However, the negative aspect surfaces in prolonged, often frivolous conversations at coffee tables. In contrast, tea, with its thought-dispersing nature, finds favour as a drink among diplomats, offering a divergence in thoughts rather than coherence. Consider milk, a significant dietary element. Unlike meat, milk represents the animalistic process in its mildest form, lacking direct influence from the animal or human astral forces. Partially an animal product, its production doesn't involve the participation of animal or human astral forces, rendering it a remarkably balanced food. It caters to those who seek to abstain from meat, but might not yet harness adequate inner strength from their astral bodies. From an external perspective, milk encompasses all essential elements required by the human organism, albeit in a limited sense, irrespective of individual characteristics. Both weak and robust individuals benefit from milk. Should someone exclusively consume milk for a duration, it wouldn't merely awaken their regular forces. It would surpass this, infusing additional strength and nurturing potential healing forces. Milk serves as a means to cultivate certain forces within ourselves, an avenue to develop specific psychic healing forces for those earnestly moved by life's seriousness. However, suitability varies from person to person. Some might thrive on this regimen, while others may not. It enables an individual to judiciously build their organism, fostering the emergence of free, autonomous inner forces. This reaffirms Feuerbach's adage, man is what he eats. Our dietary choices can either undermine our invisible independence, rendering us expressions of what we consume, or contribute to lessening the hold of our nutritional habits. Spiritual science serves as a guide, preventing our food from hindering the realisation of our full potential as humans. The wrong food easily shapes us, but by embracing knowledge of the spiritual realm, we can strive for freedom and independence. With this approach, our food becomes a support rather than an impediment on the journey toward our true human potential. And that's a wrap for today's learning journey. Thank you so much for joining us and experiencing all the excitement. If you had as much fun as we did, don't forget to give that like button a big thumbs up and subscribe.